Hello everyone! Today we're going to make a strong waterproof glue with materials that you probably have in your kitchen right now. For this project you will need unflavored gelatin, skim milk, and water. Additionally, if you plan to store this glue for use later rather than using it immediately, it's a good idea to also have a glass jar and some mint extract to help preserve the glue from spoiling. You will also need a way to heat the skim milk before adding it to the rest of the materials. This is possible with a stove, microwave, or an electric kettle, but a stove will probably be the easiest and safest option. No matter what you choose to do, due to the dangers of working with hot surfaces and materials, you should only do this under direct supervision of a responsible adult. Safety is our number one priority, so I will say this part again. Only do this with a responsible adult. To begin, you'll need unflavored gelatin. This brand is easy to find in any Walmart and it's pure gelatin with no added sugars, but you can use other brands as well if you want. For this recipe, we only need two packets of it. You can use flavored gelatin to make glue as well, but it will be a bit more of a challenge to work with, and I'll show you why that is later. Now, I measured the mass of the gelatin in the two packets in case we need it later. Here you can see it turns out to be about 14.9 grams, so almost 15 grams of pure gelatin. Measure out two tablespoons of water and mix it with the gelatin. Now I've measured out all my materials before beginning to save some time and you may wish to do the same. Now as you mix the gelatin and water you'll notice that it quickly clumps into a sticky semi-solid material. This alone is pretty sticky, but it's not yet the glue that we want. Gelatin is not very soluble in room temperature water, but it will dissolve pretty easily once it gets hot. Now, leave the mixture alone on the table for about an hour, and then come back to it. When you're ready to finish making the glue, measure out three tablespoons of skim milk to heat under adult supervision. You need to be very careful when heating milk as it will very quickly burn and smoke. I recommend slowly warming the milk until you start to see it steam a little bit. If you heat it too much, it will boil and burn, and burning milk is not something that smells nice. Trust me. As soon as the milk is steaming, carefully add it to your gelatin and mix it until it's all dissolved. Be careful, because the milk will still be hot. Now that the gelatin is mixing with the hot milk, you should notice that it easily dissolves, unlike how it was before with the colder water. So milk is a water-based fluid made from various dissolved proteins, sugars, and nutrients with suspended fats in it. Skim milk has had the fat removed from it before bottling, leaving us with mostly water, proteins, and some sugars. The most common component now, besides the water that is, is a protein called casein, which is what we are using as an, as an adhesive. In fact, Elmer's glue was originally made with casein. Now, you can make glue with casein or gelatin on their own, 
but our glue will take advantage of the adhesive properties of both. For the best results, you will want to use your glue while it's still warm and liquid, so apply it quickly and carefully, otherwise it will start to solidify and turn into a gel, kind of like mine does here. Um, and if you're wanting to store your glue long term, adding a couple drops of mint extract to the liquid mixture before pouring it into a nice suitable glass container, container for storage should help preserve it for longer. Now, if your glue does solidify too early before you're able to use it, or you want to reuse it, you can carefully warm it back up by placing its container in a warm water bath to help liquefy it again. Now, say for example, you don't have pure gelatin, but you have something like Jello. You can make glue from the jello, but you have to change things up a little bit because the jello mixture has a lot of sugar added to it. For the glue that we made before, I used about 15 grams of the pure unflavored gelatin, right? So if we were to make glue with the jello mix, say the gel that I have here, we would need to use a lot more of the mixture to get an equivalent amount of gelatin. In order to get 15 grams of actual gelatin in our glue mixture, we would need to use 110 grams of the jello mix, which leaves us with an excess 95 grams of sugar also mixed into our glue, which can make things sticky in a way that we don't want because it just makes a mess and it's a, a lot more of a pain to deal with. So, while you can use the flavored jello to make your glue, you need a lot more of the mixture and it makes a lot more of a mess. Here you can see an example of both of my glues that I made in action. I made one with the unflavored gelatin and one with cherry jello. Now the cherry jello one still works as a glue, but it's a lot stickier because of how much sugar is in it. And it's not really, it's not nice to handle 
while the unflavored gelatin makes a much nicer, much cleaner glue to use for whatever crafts you might be using it for. Thank you all for sticking around to learn how to make glue out of everyday kitchen items. I hope you have a great day.